topic is the Industrial Revolution. So the first question that we're going to answer is what is or what was the Industrial Revolution? And it took place between the 1700s and the 1800s, and it started in England. So it's going to start in England and spread to the rest of the world. Um, the definition is a series of advancements in farming and manufacturing. And for those of you who don't know manufacturing, it simply means making the way you make stuff. So factories is uh, one of the ways. So they got, basically farming and manufacturing got better, easier, and more efficient. Um, the Industrial Revolution is going to be a transformation, so a change from people working, from work being done at home, making things in your home, to being done in factories. So things are mostly made at home, and after the Industrial Revolution, most things are going to be done in factories. The next board um, answers the question, what was life like before the Industrial Revolution? So what um, was happening before the revolution, the Industrial Revolution? So as I said before, a lot of it was work being done at home. So people relied almost all on farming and living in rural settings. So Durham is considered a city. A rural setting would be, if anyone knows, um, northern Durham or Bahama, that's considered more rural um, because there's not as much, it's more spread out. Um, there's not as many people around. And so people were, what's called, uh, did subsistence farming. So you grow enough food to live and sometimes a little to sell. But this is not how you're going to make your living. You just um, basically farm and plant for yourself. All clothes, tools, and etc. so things that were made, uh, were made at home. So people made their own clothes, made their own tools. Whatever they need, they made it themselves. And life was harsh. There was a lot of death and disease. It was common. So how did the Industrial Revolution begin? Sorry, there's a lot of information on this slide. Um, but the revolution began with the agricultural revolution. So if you know agriculture, that word means a way of farming. So it, move this a little closer so you guys can see a little better, okay? Um, Agricultural led, um, revolution led to the Industrial Revolution. So why? Because they were able to make money in the Agricultural Revolution so they could then invest that money in their businesses. So through the Agricultural Revolution, farmers used new soil, healthier animals, and better tools. So they were able to make m m farm more efficiently and get more out of their farms. The biggest tool that came out of that was the seed drill, and it sounds like a you know, thing that we have today, and it sounds like it should have been around forever, but it wasn't. And the seed drill planted in orderly rows. So as before, people would dig holes themselves and put seeds in there. This is going to do that work for you. Um, the domestic system is another thing that's going to lead to the revolution. And this is when merchants or people that sold things would hire workers to produce products in their own homes. So you pay someone to make stuff that you can then sell. So in this process, each home would produce a part of the product. So if you are making something like wool, which was popular during this time, one person's house would be where you shear the sheep. And the next is when you would house you would clean the sheep's wool. And the next one you would weave it. And the next one you might dye it or stain it. So each, they would hire these people, but each person, each uh, house would be part of um, the production system. And finally, textiles became really popular. You may not know what the word means, but you are probably wearing a textile right now. So this material made of thread or yarn, basically it's cloth. So hopefully you're wearing some textiles right now. Um, so textiles, there was an inc increase in demand and new materials equal to booming business. So more people want it, and there's better machines to make it, so they're going to make a lot of money. Um, they needed so much stuff that they had to open factories. So, so much textiles were needed that they couldn't just make them in houses anymore. They had to make them in mass quantities, and so factories began to open.
So what happened because of this revolution? So it's not a political revolution. There wasn't a new government in place. But a lot of things that still exist today um, were there because of the Industrial Revolution. So um, the first thing that is still around today is the factory system. Um, so this is really clear. Um, so it was an organized method of production that brought workers and machines together um, and were controlled by managers. So there were workers to make the stuff, there were machines to make it on, and there were managers to make sure that those things happened. Okay? Sorry, I was out of the picture for a second. Um, mass production, uh, oh, back to factory system. So they're going to need power for these machines, so we'll talk about this in a second, but the steam engine is going to come around. Um, the second thing that happened because of the Industrial Revolution was mass production, and this still happens today. Make a lot of items in a short amount of time with few workers. Um, and this happened because they had interchangeable parts, which made factories more productive. So now if something, a piece broke in, say, um, one of the machines, they were able to just take a part out, put a new part in, and keep going. Um, you might think of this with a mechanical pencil, right? If you're out of lead, you simply put new lead in, and you can still use that pencil. A lot of them, if your eraser is out, you just put a new one in, interchangeable part, and you can keep going. Okay? Um, they're also going to come up with the division of labor which is that each worker has a special task. So this is the idea of an assembly line. Um, if you're making a t-shirt, one person is in charge of uh, sewing together the sleeves. Another person is in charge of sewing together the body. The next person puts the um, whatever's on it, whatever emblem or um, design is on it, they stamp that on there. The next person will diet, whatever uh, process they need, each person has a specific job, and so that's going to make things go a lot faster. And then products are going to be a lot cheaper with mass production, so the, they can make more and some more because people can afford it. Um, and finally, the last thing that's going to come out of it is capitalism. So you may have heard this before and have no idea what it means. Um, it's kind of a big term, um, but it's essentially the private ownership of industry. So companies are owned by private um, uh, people. The government has nothing to do with it. They don't make any type of regulations and they just let you own your corporation and um, run it. And so this leads to the formation of corporations. We don't have big businesses like we do today. Um, it starts with big corporations, but it's also going to lead to some problems and we'll talk about that in a second. Alright, so the next thing um, that came out of the Industrial Revolution were new technologies. So you can basically thank the Industrial Revolution for um, all the technology you have in your life because it started with them and it continued um, to grow from there. So the first thing that's going to come out of it, um, it's pretty important, are, are roads. Because you're going to need roads to get um, your stuff shipped from place to place. So they're going to have to have good roads, not just dirt or mud roads, but solid roads to be able to deliver materials. Steel is going to be um, a lot more popular because as they build factories, they're going to need to have stable factories. And if they're built with wood, they're not going to stand up as much. Um, the machines that they built are going to be more built with steel. So it's just stronger and more stable structure. Um, a big thing is energy sources. So energy is going to start with coal and water. Coal was very cheap at the time. Um, and so it's going to make um, for easy electricity and then water. So this, as I talked about before, the steam power, the steam engine, um, came from James Watt, and that, um, for a long time, was used for power. Um, you get power from water, you steam it up, and it becomes power. Um, coal is going to be used by just, you burn coal, and it, um, it makes power. It's a very dirty source of energy, but at that time, it was a very easy source. And finally, electricity is going to come out of this. You're going to need electricity to power um, factories, you're going to need lights to be on at night so that you can continue. So electricity will eventually come out of the Industrial Revolution. There's going to be better transportation, again, to transport your goods. So the railroads will begin. Uh, steamboats, as I talked about earlier, was steam power from James Watt. And even cars will come out of this. Um, Henry Ford, who created the Ford Company, Ford still exists today, used the assembly line idea to make cars really quickly. 
Another advancement is the telegraph or uh, telephone to be able to um, exchange ideas. And the final is the internal combustion engine. Again, an engine that will allow things to run a lot more smooth. So what were the effects of the Industrial Revolution? I already talked a little bit about what came out of it, and these are just a few more things that came out of it. So there's some positives and some negatives, um, like pretty much everything in life. Um, so positive is, as the previous board talked about, new technology. Um, and really, technology we have today all started with the Industrial Revolution. So we can thank the Industrial Revolution for those things. Wealth and power to Great Britain. Um, maybe good, maybe bad, depending on your perspective. Um, but it was good for them that they came up with a lot of these ideas for these um, inventions and moving to industry. So they're going to um, become wealthy and powerful through it. Uh, one of the negatives, though, is that there's really no laws to regulate business because capitalism is coming around. The government doesn't control all these businesses. I don't think they even realize they need to at that time. Um, and so you're going to have a lot of child labor and children working in really dangerous conditions. Often they were used to pick out um, things that were maybe a mess, you know, get in under those areas that are difficult to, to pull out a jam that might be in the loom that someone's working on. Also poor working conditions. So there's going to be a lot of issues of safety um, in the different um, mills that are going around. So one big problem was their, uh, the cotton would become kind of floating in the air and it would get into people's lungs and so people would develop lung issues and coughs. Um, another problem is going to be wages, really low wages. There's no minimum wage so people are not going to get paid a lot, um, which is going to lead to obvious other problems. Um, question I put here is cities do grow, so you could see that as a good thing and a bad thing because one negative that does come out of it is a public health issues. Living in cities spreads disease. There's lots of people in a little amount of room and s without sewers, and so all sewage goes into the streets, and you can imagine how disgusting that might be and what kind of diseases might be spread through that. So it's going to lower life expectancy, actually, in the cities. So there's good, there's bad. You kind of have to decide for yourself what you think. Um, and that is the Industrial Revolution.